desk. All right, let's get everything going here. All right. Looks good on this end. Let's click here, make sure we're still alive. That was just hilarious. Sorry about that, folks. Welcome to uh, CC Design Thursday. So, uh, and I'm laughing because it, I was just sitting here waiting to go live. And uh, the tripod is a little desktop tripod holding my camera and actually an iPod for me or iPad for me to see the comments. And that whole thing, just like within the last 30 seconds, fell off the desk. It just, anyway. <laughs> I'm back. I pit, ran around, picked it up, uh, and put it back as best I could for now. And so, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me. Raymond, Victoria, Paul Tranny's in the house. And welcome everyone else that's joining me, Cheryl B., on the various channels that I'm streaming on. So, today we're going to do a quick text effect. This is not uh, some revolutionary new thing in Photoshop or Illustrator. It's just something that I thought was pretty cool once I looked at the... Um, uh, the current Captain Marvel logo. I look, you know, I always look at things and say, how would I recreate that if I had to? Or how did they create it? You know, I start to think about ways and, and dissect things and try and put them back together. So I did that with the Captain Marvel logo and let's go ahead and jump into it. And I'll show you how um, I would do it. Now there's, first of all, there's two different variants I found out there. Actually three, but two for the actual movie. And I was like, well, I don't, you know, normally a logo is a logo. You don't really see two different ones that the text looks different. But anyway, um, I, I'm going to use one of them, not both. And I'll show you how this all works. So let's go ahead and switch over to the computer, which did not fall off the table. And uh, I've got Photoshop open in the background. I'm going to show you the logo that, or the text effect that we're going to recreate. Here it is. I just took a screen capture of it and open it up in Photoshop here, and that's okay. Open it up in Photoshop, and this is the effect that I'm talking about. So the Captain Marvel spelled out, it's got kind of like a bevel effect on it, it's got like a stroke effect on it, it's got these little um, starbursts behind the logo randomly or strategically placed. And I thought, well, again, how would I do that in Photoshop? So I'm going to walk you through a few steps. Now, it will not be identical because, number one, we don't have the exact same font. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to find the closest font to it that you may have or one that you can get from um, your um, Creative Cloud Adobe fonts. So with that said, let's start with that. So let's go ahead and just simply on this one, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, grab our type tool and just type the word captain. So we're just going to type the word captain in caps, <laughs> captain, in caps uh, on a layer all by itself. And we can also go in and we can kind of maybe even get the same color if we want it, that will help. And this is different shades of red. I'm gonna find like a brighter shade, there we go. And uh, now that I got the word captain in place on a layer all by itself, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump down to, actually I don't even have to jump down. I'm just gonna grab my selection tool and we're going to grab a rectangular selection tool and we're just going to go ahead and make a selection on the background, the actual photo. Now keep in mind, this is just a photo. So this Photoshop doesn't know anything about this as, as, as far as what font this would be or text, but there's a way to tell Photoshop to go look it up, go find one that's like it. So to do that uh, with the text selected and or with a selection on the background and my text selected captain, what I can do is I can go into the type menu and the first thing I would do is come down to match font. Match font is a fairly new feature in Photoshop CC. And when I do that, I just let go and it started going out and finding fonts that it thinks look like it. <laughs> okay, so uh, it found Vortice Concept. It found copper plate, which is a true type font that I have. Um, but there's also a copper plate um, Adobe font as well. Uh, you can either search for Roman or Japanese. We're going to stick to Roman. And then the ones that it found out on uh, Adobe fonts that you don't have synced. So that's why these all have the little cloud icon. It doesn't mean you can't use them. 
It just means you don't currently have those in your system. If you wanted to go get one, you could. All right, so since the um, since we have a sample of the M, we have a sample of the A, uh, in the word sample that is, we have a sample of the P, that kind of makes it easier to kind of look at these and say, well, which one's closest? And I, I kind of like the copper plate example, but again, I'd want to use the one from Typekit, um, or Adobe Type, I should say. And it says, still says Typekit, that's why I said that. And uh, if not, I can go ahead and sample or sync one of these down if I think there's another one that's close, but I'm not really feeling it. Now, if you want, you can make adjustments and you can say, well, maybe if I just concentrate on a couple of letters as opposed to the whole thing and see what my results would be that way and see how it varied the results. It brought up the copper plate bold. It brought up some different fonts maybe down here. It is based on the selection. So just moving that around or if a letter is more important to you that it looks like that letter, then you can uh, resize this or reshape it to go out and find maybe different choices or different fonts based on what it thinks, based on what you just selected. So again, uh, this brought up some different examples. None of those I like, so I'm gonna go back to where I was. I was closer that way. And let's go back to this. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, now, if there's a font that you have synced, remember, we already typed the word captain. So if I click on that font, it'll just show it to me right then and there because it's changing the word captain to that font. So uh, it won't do it for the ones that, are, that aren't that are synced. You can sync them and then come back and do it again. But for the ones that you do have in your system, you can go ahead and test those right off the bat. So I can say, oh, that Vortis concept, I'm not really thrilled with. That doesn't look quite like it. The copper plate bold is probably the closest thing that I have. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click OK, meaning now I know which font I wanna use. I even have a sample of it here. And next thing I wanna do now is go ahead and build this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document because we're not gonna build it on the, on the screenshot. The screenshot was just for reference. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make it movie size, 1920 by 1080. You can make it whatever size you want, whatever resolution you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this um, empty layer with black. So I already have black selected. I'm just gonna hold down my Option or Alt key and hit um, Delete and that will fill it with the foreground color. All right, so with that said, now I wanna go back to the word captain. Since I already have it, I might as well use it. And since that layer is there, I can either uh, drag the word captain up to my other, my other um, tab and then drag it down so I get it right in the document. Or I could have duplicated the layer from the layers panel, or I can now copy and paste layers. I could have done it any one of several ways to get that layer inside of this document. Now, Captain's really small. So let's go ahead and uh, Command T. I don't have to hold down the Shift key anymore and just go ahead and scale that up and get that nice and big. And since we know that we want this, um, we'll put that in the center. We know that we want the word Marvel even bigger underneath. Again, why go through the extra effort of do, typing this all over again, since this is already in the right font, already close in color. I can just go ahead and drag up. Oh, helps if you use the move tool. I can go ahead and drag that down, holding down the option or alt key to create a copy. So now that I got that copy, I'm going to go ahead and change this to Marvel, in case you weren't guessing that already. And same thing. Um, with that, Command T, and we'll just go ahead and scale that up. So we'll just make that nice and big. We don't have to stick to those guides, by the way, but let's say we do. Let's stick to the title safe guides. We don't really use title safe anymore these days, but uh, the title safe guides are there. All right, so now I got the Captain Marvel. Again, I can go back and look at the reference to see, oh, they're really close together. So I probably want to move them closer together and get something more like that. Okay. Next up, do I really like that color? Again, that was just a sample to kind of give me a reference. I think it should be a little darker red since most of this is darker red. So once again, we'll go to our eyedropper or actually better yet, we can, um, yeah, let's go to the eyedropper. I was gonna say, we can do this a couple of, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking out loud to myself or inside to myself. Let's go to libraries first. 
And I've got this library here called Adobe Live. What I want to see is what happens if I add this. Uh, yeah, that's just going to add the text color. So let's do that. Let's do that color instead. So I'm just sampling different foreground colors here until I find one that I like. Then I can go ahead. Oh, let me get out of this. Then I can go ahead and add that foreground color to my library. So now that color is there. And so that means when I switch to any other document, any other application, I've got that color ready to go. All right, so next, and I could have done this before I duplicated it. Sometimes you'll work faster. There we go. And let's go ahead. You'll work smarter, not faster, or faster and smarter than what I'm doing right now. And there we go. So we got our Captain Marvel. We got the right color. Um, now the, the real effect is getting it to look like that embossed look. Um, and, and before I go there, there's one thing that's bugging me about the C in this Captain. If I go back and look at the other font, see how the C doesn't like curve as much on the end. It's kind of like straight on the end. If I really wanted that, I could have it. It'd probably be easier to do this in Illustrator, but you can do it in Photoshop. If I select the Captain layer, I can't. And this is just to let you know you can do it. I'm not going to go through all the process to do it, but to let you know if you really want to straighten that up or, or tweak the Captain you or the C in Captain, you can go up to your type menu and you could convert that layer to a shape. Make sure it says what you want because once you convert it to a shape, it's no longer text that you can edit. So if I convert it to a shape, then if I go down to my, I don't know if I have them on the toolbar. If I go down to my, uh, I don't see, oh, there it is. If I go to my uh, selection tools, I've got path select and direct select. And so now if I go in, I just went to direct or path select. If I go to direct select, then I could literally go in and tweak this and move this around. I'm just exaggerating it here, but I could straighten out that C. I'm making a mess of it, but I can straighten out that C and kind of really get it flat to look like the other C. So if you really wanted to do that, you could. Easier in Illustrator, but you can do it in Photoshop as a shape. So again, I'm going to undo all that, undo, 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 put it back to not be in a shape anymore. So now it's still text. And uh, just to let you know, any of the letters that need to be warped or reshaped, convert it to a, a shape, then you can do that. All right. Um, all right. So since the text is a vector, I don't have to change the font size. That's been a part of confusion for some reason. Um, you can do it either way. So if you scale it like I did, I didn't change the point size. I just physically made it bigger. You are, in effect, changing the point size. So for example, if I go highlight the P now, the P is now 202 points. Because even though I scaled it, Photoshop did the right thing in the background by making it the right point size. Because it is still tight. So um, I hope that ends the confusion because you can do it either way. You could, I could have typed in 200 points if I knew that's what I wanted, or I could scale it and Photoshop will figure out the point size based on the scale. All right, back to our story. Let's go in now that we got the captain um, layer selected and let's try and make that bevel look to it. See how that, so it's two things going on. There's a bevel or emboss, a bevel, and then there's a stroke around it that's giving it that white or I've seen it gold as well, but whatever color it is, it's giving it that metallic look going on. So what I'm going to do is switch back to the layer or, or the document we're working on. Then I'm going to come down to the effects down at the bottom of the layers panel right there. And I'm going to click and I'm going to go choose bevel and emboss. When I choose bevel and emboss, it has already started to bevel that. So it's already started to do it, but I want that, I want that chiseled, like defined point going through the letters. That's what I want. That's the effect we're trying to get. And you can get there. It just might take some experimentation to do it. So first and foremost, the way the, the magic behind this whole dialog box is the gloss contour. 
This is where you can get some really cool things happening quickly without having to spend a lot of time on the sliders and a lot of time down here. So if I go to the gloss contour, it gives me all these various shapes. And unfortunately, there is no, oh, pick number four on the bottom row, and that always does what you want. You literally do have to play and see which one does the effect you want. So for example, if I go here, no, here, no, no. And you know what? Clicking these still may not do what you want unless you also adjust the sliders. So if I say, well, that's starting to look like what I want, but let me give it some more depth or size. Oh, size. Yeah, size is getting me there. That's kind of getting me that look that I want. So it was. it ended up being number three on the bottom row and the size, but it's not still not quite where I want to be. You know why? Because the technique is smooth. It's rounded. It's smooth. And that's cool. But I want it harder. I want it to look harder than that. And luckily, <laughs> there's a pop-up that says chisel hard. <laughs> so you have smooth, chisel hard, and chisel soft. That'll kind of give me the look I'm looking for. So if I go to chisel hard, there we go. That's more like what I'm looking for. See, that? look at that C. Look at how great that looks. You got a nice hard line going through that. And you got the nice reflections going on. So this dialog box is magical. This is just, you can do some really cool things here. So I increased the depth quite a bit. I could maybe back off the depth. I can tweak the depth a little bit more and just kind of get it where I want it to be. That's really about where I want it to be. And I could play with the size. I'm on 16 right now. I can just vary the size until I get kind of that look I'm looking for. So 16 was kind of like in the money. I, I kind of like just got there uh, totally randomly by accident. All right, so now that I, a happy accident is, as Bob Ross used to say. So now what I want to do is I want to go in and um, get the stroke because you don't have to leave the dialog box. You don't have to click OK to do the next thing. All of these are accessible right here on the left-hand side. So I want to stroke around this as well to kind of match the other logo. So if I do a stroke, that will apply it. And because it's the same exact color, we don't really see anything. But let's go ahead and change the color. Let's change it to maybe a white. And now we can start to see that stroke just like we did on the other logo. So if we uh, click OK on the color, you can still adjust the size of the stroke. So you can make that stroke really overpower the outside or you can kind of tone it down a little bit to where we get right about, I don't know, somewhere between three and four. I'm kind of liking four. And you can do the position on the inside or outside. So if you want it to look like that, do it on the outside. If you want it to look like this, do it on the inside. I'm kind of liking the inside better. I might like the outside if I make it smaller. Let's try that. Nah, I'm liking the inside better. Let's do the inside and go to something like four pixels. All right, so now we got that effect and we got it the way we want. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to um, we want to go in and change or we want to apply this to the exact same um, we want to apply the exact same effect to the next layer. So what I want to do, hang on one second here. Just... All right, there we go. So now what I want to do is I want to go in and just simply duplicate that, that effect, which by the way, it's great that it makes effects are non-destructive. You can go in and change them at any time. And I just want to go in and just simply hold down my option or alt key and drag it down to the next layer. That just simply applies the exact same thing to the layer below. All right, so Rod says, this is so cool. I'm happy you li you're liking this, Rod. All right, so next thing, and again, this is still text. So we didn't create outlines. We can go in and type in anything we want. We can change it to whatever we want it to say. So it doesn't have to say Captain Marvel, but you're getting that Captain Marvel effect. Now, we could stop here and say that we kind of mimic that type look, and that's great, and it's still, um, still vector type. We can do whatever we want. But I kind of also like, if I go back to this, I kind of like these little these little bursts of stars or whatever those are. Those little bursts of blue. Um, so how would I do that? So let's go back. 
we're going to create a new layer. And with that new layer, um, and we can call it burst or star, whatever you want to call it. So now we got that new layer and I'm going to turn off the other layers so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to turn off everything else. And on this new burst layer, I'm going to go ahead and drag out an ellipse. So just because bursts are round, roundish. So I'm just holding on the shift key, getting a perfect circle, make it as big or small as you want. And I'm going to fill that with the background color, which is black. So just go to default, fill it with black, deselect, command D. All right, so now I just basically have a black circle. Why do I have a black circle? Because the next thing I'm going to do has to be on pixels. It cannot be just on an empty layer. And that is, uh, I'm going to go to my filter menu. I'm going to come down to render and go to the lens flare that's been here for decades. All right, when we go to the lens flare, uh, it's, now, if you don't see anything on your circle, it's because this little plus sign way over here is where the lens flare is. And because your background is clear, you don't see it. So what you have to do to see it is simply put that on. There we go. Now we can see it. Put that on your object. Um, and where I ended up playing around with this, it starts off on a 50 millimeter to 300 zoom, 35, because these are supposedly like um, lens flares from a camera. So I actually liked Movie Prime the best. Now, Movie Prime puts a line through it. Just keep that in mind. If you don't want the line, then pick one of the other ones. But we don't have to be exact. Um, I kind of like the 105 as well. So Movie Prime or 105. Now, I'm already seeing one thing that you're going to have to deal with. If we go with Movie Prime, like that, and it's okay that it's putting that, um, that line through it. I'm okay with that. I can adjust the brightness so I can have it super bright or turn it down quite a bit. I think I was around 40, 39, 40. Once I click OK, um, lens flare or these kind of effects are not non-destructible. So it is going to physically put it on that black circle. So make sure you duplicate your layer or whatever you want to do so you can always go back and get rid of it if you don't want it. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, click OK on that. And here's what I don't like about it. If we go back to the original, those flares are blue. Mine, for whatever reason, the movie prime makes it red. So once again, you can either use an adjustment layer if you want to go back and change the color. And I recommend that. So that way you can go back and change the color. But since I'm just doing this this one time, I'm going to bring up hue and saturation. Command U for hue. And uh, once I bring that up, I can just simply, it won't affect the black. It will only affect the color. So I can just simply drag the slider until I get it blue. So you can make it whatever color you want. And again, if you do this as a hue and saturation adjustment layer, then you'll always be able to go back and change it. All right, the next thing I want to do. Oh, and I shouldn't have done that first. Hang on. Let me undo, undo. One more thing. Before we put the starburst on there, I don't want the circle to have a hard edge. So one thing before we put the starburst on, let's go to our filter menu and let's go to blur. Let's choose Gaussian blur and let's blur that circle quite a bit. So it just doesn't have that hard edge. There we go. All right. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. All right, so now let's do the lens flare and we can just go back up to filter, go back down to lens flare. It should remember the settings we just did. And there it is. Remember the exact same settings. Click OK. And then hue and saturation or hue and saturation adjustment layer. Change it to whatever color you want it to be. So kind of make it blue. Click OK. And then when we turn the rest of the layers back on, we have our blue little starburst. So now we're gonna just move that burst behind everything else. And look, it even kind of does exactly what we want it to do. So we can move that around, you can put it behind the M like they did. We can hold down our option and alt here and right in the middle, like this one was right here, nice and big. And you can either do that one of two ways. You can make a new one that's bigger or you can put the put one there and just scale it up. I should have held up. Oh, I should have held down the option key to keep it centered, but we'll just put one right there. And you can always, by the way, don't feel like you have to have those at 100% strength. You can always lower the opacity if you want to kind of tone it down a little bit as a background element. And there we are. We've got our Captain Marvel inspired 
We didn't copy exactly. We just it was we looked at the inspiration of what the great folks over at Marvel Studios did, and we kind of said, "Hey, how would we make one like or like it or similar?" So, last again, one more time. If you wanted to make it the exact same look of the font, either go find the font, Google Captain Marvel font, and use the exact font that they used, or take the um, Type, type the word captain in the closest font that you have and go into Illustrator, convert to outlines and literally change the characters to look exactly the way you want them to look. All right. So <laughs> this is so needed. Thanks. Uh, Dana Pry. Uh, love this. Thank you. You're welcome. Lee says cool. Uh, Slammy says hello. Uh, Sandra says awesome. Rod, I'm just looking for questions and I'm taking the compliments too. Great. Thanks. <laughs> and... All right, that's it. And by the way, if we hit the letter F a couple times, that will hide everything else. And we can also hit command semicolon to hide the guides. So we can kind of see it in its full glory. All right, folks, that's it for me for today. We're kind of ending right on time. Uh, this took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but we're kind of ending right where we should be. And uh, uh, once again, Thank you, Captain Marvel. Can't wait to go see the movie this weekend. And for everybody else, uh, have a great weekend. I don't think I'm going to stream tomorrow, but if I do, you'll see it. If not, have a good weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. And I have to go reset up my tripod and put all the stuff and the gear back on it. And if I missed comments, I'm sorry, because that one of them was an iPad on that thing. All right. Uh, what is this? Sochi, hello there. Let's see if I missed any comments. You lost sound. You shouldn't have lost sound. No one else said they lost sound. Uh, and I would tell you what to try, but you can't hear me. All right. Okay, so with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Uh -huh.